Welcome back to the Lumios Post, where we talk about all things Pokemon, and today we're going to be talking about the second uh, part, I guess, of the Scarlet and Violet DLC, The Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. That is, of course, the second part is, of course, the Indigo Disc, and specifically we're going to be talking about a tale that we found that this may be based off of and uh, kind of just how we think that could uh, play a role in the story. We previously talked about how the first DLC, the Teal Mask, may be uh, inspired by the uh, Legend of Mamotaro and kind of how that could play a role in the story. And we're going to do the same thing here with the second DLC. Uh, first off, what is the tale? Well, the second DLC is based off of Urashima Taro, and I apologize. Uh, Japanese obviously isn't my first language, so I may have butchered the pronunciation of that. But yeah, it, it's it's Urashima Taro, something along those lines. So what is that fairy tale? Well, a very very condensed version of it. It's basically there's this fisherman named Urashima Taro who comes across these kids beating up a turtle, and he's like, "Hey, yo, stop beating up that turtle!" And he makes them stop beating up the turtle, and uh releases the turtle back into the ocean and later he has this turtle come back but now it's a giant turtle and the turtle's like dude i am so grateful for you saving me from those jerks get on my back i want to take you to the dragon palace that exists under the sea so he's like okay cool and he hops on the back of the turtle and goes to the dragon palace under the sea uh, where he meets the Emperor Ryujin, I think is maybe how it's pronounced. Uh, either way, it's the guy that Thunderous is based off of. Just a fun fact for you, uh, the incarnate form of Thunderous specifically. But he meets this guy, and he meets the princess of this dragon palace, and he ends up marrying the princess. And he spends three days in this palace and then it's like you know i really need to get back to the land my uh, mom is very old and so i need to you know check on her make sure everything's going good i can't just you know up and run for three days like this and the princess is like okay well if, if you have to go here take this box and he takes the box she's like this box will protect you from getting harmed at all but don't open it and he's like, oh, well, okay. He goes back to land and basically finds out it's been 300 years since he left the land, since he went to the Dragon Palace. Turns out that a day in the Dragon Palace is under the ocean is uh, the equivalent to 100 years on land. So he's been gone for 300 years. So his mom is long gone. And someone even tells him, oh yeah, I've heard of Urashima Taro. He was this guy that 300 years ago got lost out at sea. And so, uh, you know, he's distraught. He's like, what do I do? Uh, maybe something in this box can uh, help me out. So he opens the box and it turns out that the box was containing his years. And so he quickly ages to a very, very old man and dies. So the moral of the story is basically listen to people that are smarter than you. Well, anyways, how does this fit into the Scarlet and Violet DLC? Well, the turtle in the story uh, is depicted in a certain way that is very, very similar, as you can see, to Terrapagos, which is the uh, kind of main Pokemon of the Scarlet and Violet DLC, the Indigo Disc, as well as just being the third legendary that we've been talking about for a while. We've had a teaser for this Pokemon already in the game for Scarlet and Violet, and everybody's been speculating on what this could be for a while now. Well, now we know it's it's Terrapagos, and man, I, I love this design, uh, but there, there's got to be more than just that. I'm imagining that the story will somehow be a, a little similar to the story of Urashima Taro, and I also specifically imagine that uh, it, the important characters in Urashima Taro will kind of have a Pokemon equivalent. Not necessarily a Pokemon equivalent like a Pokemon represent them, but like a character in the games that will represent them. So who could that be? Well, I imagine that if in the Teal Mask you were kind of supposed to be Mamotaro, then in this game I imagine that you are Urashima Taro, which makes sense because you were going to the Blueberry Academy, and the Blueberry Academy is primarily underwater, under the ocean specifically, which is very similar to the Dragon Palace. So clearly uh, the Blueberry Academy is uh, the Pokemon version of the Dragon Palace. 
Well, I imagine that also, by the way, too, we should point out that Terrapagos is, you know, blue in color and it is very circular. So, you know, if, if you look at Naranja Academy, you know, meaning orange, it, Coridon clearly being the orange, Uva Academy meaning grape, Miridon clearly being the grape, it's clear that Terrapagos is the blueberry, if you will. So, it's very likely that Terrapagos uh, is like a dragon type, in my opinion, uh, just because, for one, they like to do that with legendary Pokemon, and that would uh, further kind of correlate him to Coridon and Miridon and kind of make them more of a trio, as if they're all dragons. But also, just because if it's a dragon palace and the Blueberry Academy, you know, the, the Blueberry being a dragon, you, know, you see what I'm doing here? So I, I imagine that's the case. Uh, but I, I think we could even encounter this legendary very early on in the story. Perhaps when we first get to Blueberry Academy, we see a small form of this legendary. Who knows? Maybe even a pre-evolution. Or maybe even this legendary is a pre-evolution. And we see it getting into some trouble, whether it's kids beating it up or whether it's uh, just people... Uh, or Pokemon, rather, attacking it, like, you know, say, Sharpedo or Gyarados or something, we rescue it, and then later it will come in to kind of, you know, pay us back and and uh, help us defeat whoever the villain is or, or whatever's going on in this story. Maybe even the Academy starts to, like, take in water and it saves us. I don't know, just spitballing here. But I do think that if you look at the legend of Urashima Taro, it could point to us meeting the turtle very, very early and uh, befriending it and maybe even saving it. Now, we get into the other characters. Other important characters are Ryujin and also the princess. Now, Ryujin would obviously be the emperor of the Dragon Palace. So, in Blueberry Academy's case, I would imagine this is the director of Blueberry Academy, similar to how Clavel is the director of Naranja or Uva Academy, of course, depending on the version of your game. So we'll get into who I think this person could be specifically in a moment, but just for now, just know that I think that this person, uh, this Ryujin character, would be the director of the Blueberry Academy. Now, who is the princess? Personally, I think the princess will actually be a character we've already met, that being Nimona. And the reason I think this is because, uh, for a number of reasons, first off, uh, Nimona loves battling. And we know that the Blueberry Academy is a, a academy that is known for battling. It says on the official website that their curriculum is very focused on battling. So this is Nimona's Disney World. So it only makes sense that Nimona would be there and Nimona might serve as the princess character, which would mean her parents could be the Ryujin character. We know her parents are very, very rich, so it makes sense that her parents could be, uh, if not the director of the academy, a kind of investor of the academy, um, you know, or a founder even. And maybe even this is why Nimona loves battling so much, as she grew up at the Blueberry Academy, but wanted to do something a little bit different. So her parents were like, hey, well, you know what? We have this villa in Paldea. You can go to school there if you want. And so that's what Nimona does. But I, I, I do think that it could be her parents. There's even some uh, evidence in the data mine of Scarlet and Violet that shows that there are these two characters named Billy O'Nair, or no, Billy and O'Nair, excuse me, uh, you know, clearly being billionaire, and it's supposedly no Nimona's parents, and you even can battle them. So, if they are indeed playing a role in DLC, this would be a great way to do it, in my opinion. And again, would we'll further connect Nimona to being the princess character in the story. So now the question is, we have our turtle equivalent, we have our Urashima equivalent, and we have our Ryujin and princess equivalent. So what's the equivalent to the box? Well, what is the box in the story? In the story, the box is something that the princess gives you and trusts you with. And, you know, it's it's a powerful item, right? This this box. It is something that, you know, contains Urashima Taro's years, which is a big deal. Well, uh, you know, you could say maybe Nimona will give us a very important item, but I would say she already has. Nimona is the character who gives you the Terra Orb 
in the uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet base game. That is obviously the thing that allows you to terrestrialize your Pokemon, which terrestrialization is going to play a huge role in, I think, both of the DLC packs, but especially in the Indigo Disc, because Terrapagos is even the uh, creator of terrestrialization and even has the giant terrestrialization symbol on its back. So it makes sense that terrestrialization will be an important part. And Nimona did give you this Terra Orb, and she did essentially entrust you with this Terra Orb. This is a very powerful thing. I think even in the press release for the games, they said something about how uh, only certain trainers can carry Terra Orbs. Like, you know, it's not handed out to everybody. So it's a powerful thing Nimona trusted you with it. Now, I don't think we're going to be like Urashima Taro and, you know, go against her with this, but I think it's more like what Urashima Taro should have done, and our Terra Orb will play a huge role in this game. There's even, of course, been some rumors about a, a new Terra Stool forms. Uh, I'm gonna keep using this term, but Terra Max forms is like my favorite term for it. Uh, that is, of course, a term coined by my friend Professor Kauri, and if we do get these Terra Max forms, this could perhaps be what it is, is you know, something with our Terra Orbs happens and it gets like a little upgrade. Think similar to how uh, the Z Ring gets an upgrade into the Z Power Ring, you know, in, uh, in the anime. Ash has a Z Ring, but it's upgraded to a Z Power Ring. In the games, it's just in Sun and Moon, it's a Z Ring, but in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it's a Z Power Ring. And uh, what this basically is, the difference is that it can use uh, Solgaleo and Lunala's signature uh, Z moves because that's actually why Ash has to get his upgraded in the anime is because he can't fit Solgaleo's crystal Z crystal on his Z ring and so he has to uh, give it to the Tapus and they change it into a Z power ring which allows him to uh, use Solgaleo's Z move so it could be a similar thing here is that we have to perhaps Terra Max if you will uh, Terrapagos or maybe just one of our starters or just any Pokemon and so our Terra Orb has to be upgraded. But I think the Terra Orb is going to be the box equivalent. Now, another thing that I picked up on that I do think is a really important deal uh, in this DLC pack and, and kind of its correlation to the Urashima Taro story is that in the Urashima Taro story, when he's in the Dragon Palace, Urashima Taro finds out that there's like this room that shows all the four different seasons. Now, we kind of get a similarity to this with in the trailer we got for this DLC pack, we see a room where there's the screen and it's showing this uh, environment with different pictures and weather patterns and stuff. And you can make the argument that these weather patterns are the season. You see uh, one with like a tornado or rather just a, a wind, you know, the wind I think of the fall and that also is tornado season. Uh, you see one with snow, obviously that is uh, winter. And we see one with rain and lightning. That kind of made me think of spring. You know, there's that whole term of April showers bring May flowers. So springtime, rain. Uh, you could also argue it's summer uh, and that the next one I'm about to say is spring. But then there's one that's uh, just sun. You see sun all over the grid. And that is kind of uh, supposed to be either summer or spring. I guess you could interchange that with the storm one. They could be either or. But either way, there are is the four seasons represented on the screen. So if you notice, the games say that most of the school is located under the water, which implies that some of the school is not located underwater. And this makes sense because something that we're all thinking is, if this game's going to introduce, this pack is going to introduce 115-ish Pokemon, and we do know that will probably be the case, as it says that the DLC pack as a whole, both packs, will bring back a, a little over 230 Pokemon. So it stands to reason that one pack will bring about 115 and the next pack will bring about 115. And if that's the case, then where the heck are they? I mean, even some of the Pokemon we saw, like Whimsicott and Zebstrika, surely we're not finding them wild running around an academy in the middle of the ocean. It makes sense that it would be 
in a world. So there's clearly going to be a new environment. What I imagine this will be is in this room where we see this weather panel, there will be warp panels similar to the ones we see in the research station in Area Zero, and this will allow us to uh, warp to those different environments. There'll be a sunny environment that's kind of summer themed. I'm sure you'll even be able to find Deerling or Sawsbuck in their different forms in these places, but there will be a, a windy place representing the fall theme a snowy place representing the winter theme, and then the stormy place representing the spring thing. Again, you could interchange summer or spring, but I, I do think that this will definitely be the case, and I think that's how they're going to explain you being able to go to more than just, you know, this, this one little school in the middle of the ocean. Now, again, I imagine the climax will involve uh, the emperor i think the emperor will be a bad guy so i think nimona's parents will be bad people i mean you know billy and onair right off the bat they're wanting you to think rich and, and you know how it is eat the rich and all that so i think you're immediately supposed to get a vibe of kind of ooh stuck up and all this and you know even nimona doesn't seem to be too too close to her parents so i think they want you to be distanced for that reason you know and it, it makes sense that uh, it, parents and children relationships will play an important role in this dlc because it was a big part of the base game right you had you know arvin struggles with his parents and so i think it'll be cool to kind of mirror that by having nimona's struggle with her parents and like with arvin's case his parents are long gone but with nimona's parents they're still very much here and are you know a a toxic presence in her life maybe even you know that could be why she wanted to go to the naranja or uva academy instead of the blueberry academy uh, which is again focused on battling so you'd think it'd be nimona's main place but yeah I, I definitely imagine that that's kind of how the story will correlate and then teropagos will come in at the end maybe they're trying to capture teropagos and that's why they've headquartered under the ocean i don't know uh, be sure to let me know what you think of this theory especially the part about the seasons i was very proud of that i'm not gonna lie i, I was i was very proud of that <laughs> but let me know what you think of this theory in the comments below if you have anything to add to it again of course let me know in the comments below be sure to like subscribe and hit the bell for notifications as we get more information on these games you know we'll be covering it here or this dlc rather and you don't want to miss that so again like subscribe and hit that bell until next time, I'll see all of you later.